The Troubles in Northern Ireland, a violent ethno-nationalist conflict that spanned roughly from the late 1960s until the Good Friday Agreement in 1998, has left an indelible mark on the region's collective memory and political landscape. Over three decades of bloodshed, around 3,600 lives were lost, and tens of thousands were injured. Among the many tragic aspects of the conflict, one haunting phenomenon continues to cast a long and painful shadow. The Disappeared The Disappeared refers to individuals who were abducted, secretly executed, and buried in undisclosed locations by paramilitary groups during the Troubles. These disappearances were often politically motivated, and the victims were accused of being informants, traitors, or perceived enemies of the paramilitaries. The perpetrators, mainly members of the Irish Republican Army, IRA, but also from loyalist factions, sought to keep these killings hidden from the public eye and from justice, adding to the cruel legacy of secrecy and silence that characterized much of the conflict. While the Troubles officially ended with the signing of the Good Friday Agreement, the scars left behind by these disappearances persist. Families of the disappeared have endured decades of anguish, not knowing the fates of their loved ones or where their remains might lie. The unresolved cases of the disappeared have overshadowed discussions of reconciliation, justice, and remembrance in Northern Ireland, complicating efforts to heal the wounds of the past. In this short film, Emerald Chronicle will explore the phenomenon of the disappeared, examining its historical context, the impact on families and communities, the political and social legacy, and the ongoing efforts to recover and identify the missing. We will also consider how the presence of the disappeared continues to shape the debate around the legacy of the Troubles and what it reveals about the challenges of dealing with the past in post-conflict Northern Ireland. To fully grasp the significance of the disappeared, one must first understand the backdrop against which these abductions and killings took place. The Troubles were rooted in deep-seated political, social, and religious divisions between two main communities, the Catholic or Nationalist or Republican community, who largely sought the reunification of Northern Ireland with the Republic of Ireland, and the Protestant or Unionist or Loyalist community, who favored continued union with the United Kingdom. The conflict emerged in the late 1960s after decades of institutionalized discrimination against the Catholic minority in Northern Ireland in areas such as housing, employment, and political representation. What began as a civil rights movement demanding equality soon escalated into a violent conflict. Paramilitary organizations such as the IRA on the Republican side and the Ulster Volunteer Force UVF and Ulster Defense Association UDA, on the Loyalist side, played central roles in the conflict. The British Army and police forces, including the Royal Ulster Constabulary RUC, were also deeply involved in what became a protracted and bloody struggle. In the midst of this violence, Paramilitary groups on both sides engaged in extrajudicial killings, often targeting civilians accused of collaborating with the enemy. Some of these victims were disappeared, taken from their homes or places of work, killed in secret, and buried in unmarked graves. Their disappearances were shrouded in secrecy, leaving no clear trail for authorities or families to follow. The term the disappeared refers to at least 17 individuals who were abducted and killed by the IRA, as well as a few by loyalist groups between the early 1970s and the early 1980s. While many victims of the Troubles met their fate through bombings, shootings, or other forms of violence, the fate of the disappeared was unique in its deliberate concealment. In most cases, these victims were abducted on suspicion of being informants, collaborators with British security forces, or in some cases, simply because they were perceived as threats to the paramilitary agenda. 
One of the most notorious cases of the disappeared is that of Jean McConville, a widowed mother of 10, who was abducted from her home in Belfast in 1972 by the IRA. She was accused of passing information to the British Army, a charge her family has always denied. McConville was taken away, never to be seen alive again, leaving her children to grow up in foster care and state homes. It wasn't until 2003, over 30 years later, that her remains were discovered by accident on a beach in County Louth, just south of the Irish border. Other well-known cases include Columba McVeigh, a young man from County Tyrone, who was last seen alive in 1975, and Joe Linsky, a former IRA member who disappeared in 1972. Many of the victims were low-level operatives within the Republican or Loyalist movements, whose perceived disloyalty was considered a grave betrayal during the height of the conflict. The secrecy surrounding their abductions and deaths was often justified by the perpetrators as a necessary measure to protect the integrity of the paramilitary organizations and their operations. The methods employed in these disappearances were calculated to maximize the fear and control exerted by the paramilitaries. By abducting and secretly killing suspected informers, the IRA and other groups sought to deter others from cooperating with British authorities. The lack of bodies and the absence of any official acknowledgement of the killings left families in a cruel limbo, unable to mourn or bury their loved ones properly. For the families of the disappeared, the abductions were just the beginning of a long and painful ordeal. Deprived of any closure, they have had to live with the uncertainty of their loved ones' fates for decades. Many spent years trying to find answers, appealing to the public authorities and even to the paramilitary organizations themselves for information. In many cases, these appeals were met with silence or denial leaving families with little hope of finding resolution. The emotional toll on these families has been profound. In addition to the trauma of losing a loved one in such a brutal manner, they have had to endure the stigma associated with the circumstances of the disappearances. Accusations of informing or collaborating with the enemy, whether true or false, often cast a long shadow over the victims and their families, leading to isolation and ostracism within their communities. The case of Jean McConville is a poignant example of this. Her children were left to fend for themselves after her abduction, with some of them placed in foster care or institutional homes. For years, they searched for answers about their mother's fate, all while living with the stigma of the IRA's accusation that she had been an informer. Even after her remains were found in 2003, the debate over her alleged role as a British informant continued to cloud her legacy. Many families of the disappeared have been outspoken in their demands for justice and truth. They have formed advocacy groups such as the Wave Trauma Center, which has worked tirelessly to bring attention to their plight and to press for the recovery of the remains of the missing. Their efforts have been instrumental in keeping the issue of the disappeared in the public consciousness, ensuring that these cases are not forgotten as Northern Ireland seeks to move forward from its violent past. The IRA's involvement in the abduction and disappearance of individuals during the Troubles has been one of the most controversial aspects of the conflict's legacy. While the organization played a central role in the nationalist movement, fighting for the reunification of Ireland, its methods often crossed ethical boundaries, particularly in its treatment of suspected informers. The IRA's use of disappearances as a tool to eliminate perceived threats within its ranks or among its support base was part of a broader strategy of intimidation and control. The decision to abduct, execute, and secretly bury individuals was driven by the need to avoid the political fallout that might come from more public forms of execution. By making people disappear, the IRA sought to maintain deniability and avoid inflaming public opinion, especially within the nationalist community. However, 
This strategy also had the effect of deepening the fear and mistrust within communities, as people were left to wonder who might be next and what fate might await them if they were suspected of disloyalty. While the IRA has been implicated in the vast majority of cases of the disappeared, loyalist paramilitaries also engaged in similar practices, though on a smaller scale. The UVF and UDA, for example, were responsible for a number of abductions and killings, particularly of individuals suspected of being Republican sympathizers or informants for the British state. In both cases, the disappearances were part of a broader campaign of terror designed to suppress dissent and maintain control over local populations. The signing of the Good Friday Agreement in 1998 brought an official end to the troubles, but it did not immediately resolve the issue of the disappeared. While the peace process created a framework for addressing many of the legacies of the conflict, including the release of political prisoners and the reform of policing, the issue of the missing remained a painful and unresolved matter. In 1999, following intense pressure from the families of the disappeared and human rights organizations, the IRA publicly acknowledged its role in some of the disappearances and offered to assist in locating the remains of those it had killed. This was a significant moment in the search for truth as it marked the first time that the organization had admitted to its involvement in these secret killings. However, the information provided was often incomplete or inaccurate, leading to further frustration for families. The establishment of the Independent Commission for the Location of Victims Remains, ICLVR, in 1999 was a key step in the efforts to recover the bodies of the disappeared. The commission, set up by both the British and Irish governments, was tasked with locating the remains of those who had been abducted and killed during the Troubles. The ICLVR operates on the basis of confidentiality, meaning that individuals who provide information about the location of remains are granted immunity from prosecution. This was intended to encourage former paramilitaries to come forward with information without fear of legal consequences. Despite these efforts, the process of locating and recovering the remains has been slow and often fraught with difficulties. As of 2023, the remains of 13 of the 17 known disappeared have been recovered, but several cases remain unresolved. The search for Columba McVeigh, for example, has been ongoing for decades, with multiple unsuccessful excavations conducted at suspected burial sites. The failure to recover all the bodies has been a source of continued anguish for the families and has underscored the challenges of dealing with the legacy of the Troubles. The issue of the disappeared has had a profound impact on the broader process of reconciliation and justice in post-conflict Northern Ireland. The peace process that emerged from the Good Friday Agreement was built on a delicate balance of competing interests, with the focus on moving forward rather than dwelling on the past. This approach, often described as constructive ambiguity, has been criticized by some for failing to adequately address the needs of victims and their families. For the families of the disappeared, the lack of accountability for those responsible for the abductions and killings has been a major obstacle to achieving justice. While the ICLVR has facilitated the recovery of remains, its mandate does not include prosecuting those responsible for the disappearances. This has led to a situation where many of the perpetrators of these crimes remain free, with some even holding political office in post-conflict Northern Ireland. The question of how to balance the need for justice with the demands of reconciliation is one that has continued to haunt Northern Ireland in the years since the end of the Troubles. The peace process has undoubtedly brought significant benefits, including a dramatic reduction in violence and the establishment of a power-sharing government. However, the unresolved legacy of the past, including the issue of the disappeared, has made it difficult for many to fully embrace the notion of reconciliation.
In recent years, there have been renewed calls for a comprehensive approach to dealing with the legacy of the Troubles, including the creation of a Truth and Reconciliation Commission similar to that established in South Africa after the end of apartheid. Such a commission could provide a forum for victims and perpetrators to come forward and share their experiences, helping to create a more complete and honest account of the conflict. However, the political sensitivities surrounding the Troubles and the fear of opening old wounds have made it difficult to achieve consensus on how best to address the past. The specter of the disappeared continues to loom large over Northern Ireland, a haunting reminder of the darkest days of the Troubles. For the families who have spent decades searching for their loved ones, the issue is not just a historical curiosity, but a deeply personal and painful reality. The absence of truth, justice, and closure has left an enduring wound that has yet to fully heal. As Northern Ireland continues to grapple with the legacy of the Troubles, the disappeared serve as a stark reminder of the human cost of conflict. Their fate has overshadowed the broader debate around reconciliation, justice, and remembrance, highlighting the difficulties of moving forward while so many questions about the past remain unanswered. Efforts to recover the remains of the disappeared and to provide some measure of closure to their families are ongoing. But the road ahead is still fraught with challenges. The search for truth in the case of the disappeared is emblematic of the broader struggle to come to terms with the past in Northern Ireland, where the wounds of the conflict continue to shape the present. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. We deeply appreciate your interest in exploring the complex and poignant history surrounding the disappeared during the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Your engagement with these important stories helps keep the memory alive and honors the lives of those who have been affected. We hope this video has provided valuable insights and fostered a deeper understanding of this significant chapter in history. If you found this content meaningful, please consider liking, sharing, or subscribing to our channel for more explorations of Irish history, myths, legends, and folktales.